What up, Naughty Steppers? It's Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you on the Naughty Step channel. And it is time for the third yearly favourites video of 2018 as I bring you my top 50 singles or tracks in bass music from the last 12 months. Now, I had a difficult time trying to choose between this and the EPs list to build towards and have last but I thought I should go with this one first. Because even though this is a massive list, the biggest and best tracks of the whole year, having listened to tens of thousands of them, EPs are a form of multi-track project, and that, I feel, is something that you have to finish with. Much more of a feat, in other words, to have a great EP than a great single, these are the things that together make EPs, lest we forget. So singles are still obviously very important, and this list took an exceptionally long time to make, there's not much between a lot of these tracks, so don't hang too much on the placement of them, particularly from tracks 50 to 35 or 40. But I finally got to a list I think I'm happy with, always subject to slight alterations, but overall, I think I've reached that stage of completion with it. Couple rules to run through before I get going here. Again, only one entry per artist for variety purposes. You cannot have a part in two tracks in any way, so if you're someone who both produces and features, like Sullivan King for example, still one track only. In this video, I will be giving special mentions again, a few of those before before listing off tracks 50 to 30. I will then be going downwards from 30 to number 1, talking about them more as I go on to reflect their positioning. Lastly, and please remember this with each of these videos, this is solely my opinion, one opinion, I am giving no objective views here. It's about how they make me feel, my absolute favourites of 2018, those that I've enjoyed most from this year. So feel free to voice your thoughts on my opinions as well as give your own favourites from this year in the comments down below. Said this before, but that is the best part. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on the best dark electronic music of this year. Let's get the conversation flowing. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time we got going with this list, starting with the special mentions for my top 50 singles of 2018. So, for the special mentions, we have... Deafmind and Lil Clark with Flexin, Digitist with Road Warrior, Guillotine with Chopper, Lax with Fake Friends, Monuman with Polycoral, Nanomake with Vision, Radai with Turn Up, Redax with Lose Control, Shift Key with Bite, Somnium Sound and Jet Set with Devil, and Trollface and Sub Antics with The Dab That Dabbed Back. At number 50, we have Matroda with The Drive. At number 49, we have Eptic with No Mercy. At number 48, we have Azdek with Black Roses. At number 47, we have Odd Prophet with Listen. At number 46, we have Poseidon with Cerberus. And at number 45, my favourite bassline track of the year, Acting Stank by Flavor D. At number 44, we have Hey Boy by Troy Boy. At number 43, we have Blade by Company. At 42, we have Helix by Lodge Boy. And at 41, we have the title track from Direct's One EP. At number 40, we have the fantastically animated Hungry Hippos by Dodge and Fusky and Dubloads. Motherfuckers by Jaws and Snails at 39, which has one of the best bass lines I've heard this year. And at 38, we have The Beauty and the Laser Gun by Panda Eyes. At number 37, it's Psych by Rage Mode. At 36, it's Hyper Bro Step by Jarvis. And at 35, it's one of the best experimental dubstep tunes I heard this year, In Fracture by Basic. At number 34, we have Noisia and Former with Cleansing. At 33, we have Funky Fool with Make It Drop. At 32, it's Hades with Revelations, a fantastic electro-leaning track. And at 31, it's Cage with Mind, one of my favourite house numbers of this year. At number 30, we have Humanoid 2.0 by Eprom and Zeke Beats, a fantastically minimalistic, immersive, post-apocalyptic kind of track that makes me feel like robotic dominion is near. Love it. 
At number 29, we have Hot by Roscoe. My favourite Roscoe track from his comeback year, the wubs and moments of isolation in this tune are absolutely top notch. At number 28, we have Fox Stevenson with Out On My Own, my favourite Fox track from this year. Quite the task following up last year's Miss You, but this one I feel runs closest quality wise. At number 27, we have Ghastly and Dr. Fresh with Rise Up, a song I've been waiting to hear in full for years, and it didn't disappoint. That devilish first drop is one of my favourites of this year. At number 26, we have Zabo and Social Kid with Ultima, the best mid tempo track I heard this year thumping drop, amazing interlude melody, enchanting vibe to it, great percussion, uh, excels on all fronts. At number 25 we have Muzzy featuring Sullivan King with In The Night, the best drum and bass track I heard all year, so much character, good feeling and expertise on show, styles complement each other very well, adore this track. At number 24 we have Dusty Cloud with Those Nights, one of the most haunting earthy house tracks I've heard in recent years. Dusty Cloud yet again coming through with a stellar single in a calendar year. Following that, at number 23, we have PMP and Daps with Asuerdate, a Helter Skelter Trap House hybrid track that brings together PMP's scything production and Daps' stunning Spanish articulation beautifully. I highly recommend. Following that, we have Bounce by Trinity, my favourite from his superb Ultimate EP. Love all the directions this one takes, very unpredictable and full of class in its construction, massively underrated. At number 21 we have Machete by Mastodon, my favourite from the Dong Man this year, huge and vacuous, savage, mighty, monstrous, all the things we've come to love him for, and he delivers that and more here. They call him Machete. At number 20 we have one of the most jittery, skittish, well-cut dubstep tracks I heard this year, and that's Play Card by Trilla. It's not only the dubstep here, but the introduction is epic, the builds are great, midsection too, a lot comes together to give this track its surging energy, even though it's not outwardly massive. Great tune. At number 19, it's dubstep of a whole different kind, dazzling, genuine, heartfelt, and that's my favourite from Oliverse's Dimension EP, Get High. It's tracks like these that remind us of what dubstep used to be, what made people fall in love with the genre, invaluable in its vibrancy and richness, very forceful too, much more like this is needed. Coming in at number 18 we have the mysterious new producer Death Pact, with my favourite from a couple of EPs dropped close together this year, and that's Danger. This brilliantly brooding number just gets you in the groove in the most sinister way, amazing pull and gravitas to it, tugging at your core, contagious beat, Hard not to like, in my opinion. At number 17, we have a dubstep track that I've been playing repeatedly since hearing it near the start of the year, and that's The Fight by Ivory. There is so much to enjoy about this track, the battle scene introduction, the ravenous, well-managed dubstep, the vocal samples. It brings a lot together in this really compact way and hits you in exactly the right spots. At number 16, we have my favourite outright house track of the year, a song full of flavour, brightness and a whole load of naughty fun, it's Malar with Bling Bling. You know you like a tune when it makes you move as opposed to making yourself move to it, and that's always the case for me when listening to this number, so bubbly and cheeky and playful. This song is the definition of if it's naughty then you know. I remember hearing it for the first time and finding myself instantly shuffling along to it, so, so good. Taking spot number 15, we have one of my favourite collaborations of the year. The first, admittedly, I heard of both these producers, and I haven't looked back since, and that's Subtronics and Boogie T with Hit'em. What I love most about this track is how different it is from the current dubstep norm, built on this insane stream-like flow, yet still very heavy and screechy at points. 
quite the combination of ideas. Not only that, but the main melody is really sweet and easily lures you in, the vocal sample usage is very good, and it shows a real awareness sonically and structurally from drop to drop. I mean, what's not to like here? At number 14, we have one of the most unforgiving trap songs of 2018. I haven't stopped loving it since I first heard it midway through the year, and that's Terror by Nasty. From the mystifying intro to the unsurprisingly nasty drops, the unnerving feel of it, the second drop alterations, and all managed so neatly, for what it is, it's pretty much perfect. The attention to detail is just so on point here. Every sound really plays its part and has significance within the context of the track. Rare that this style is done well, but my god is that the case here. Next, we have an artist who I'm not sure many following this channel will have heard of, but who came through with one of the undoubted dark electronic music tracks of the year, and that's Sophie with Face Shopping. This thing really is quite the auditory experience, disorienting and manic, like flipping constantly between a dream and a nightmare, wild but so well controlled in its construction. Founded upon these viscerally twisted, glitchy sounds, supported by the delicacy of Sophie's vocal, up there with the best sound design I've heard all year, and honestly, I feel you'd be a sucker to be missing out. Coming in at number 12, we have a collaboration that many saw coming, and which delivered in a whole manner of ways, one of the most joyous dark electronic music tracks of the last 12 months. It's Joyride and Skrillex with Again Widder. This is a fantastic example of the fun that can be had when collaborating. The duo don't adhere to the rules, going off on several cartoonish tangents, and bringing together completely polarized genres in bass house, trap, and jungle terror. The tribal drum midsection here being one of my favorite sequences of 2018. If this is the level of ambition and adventure we can expect from Joyride's debut album Brave, then we could be in for something special here. At number 11, we have the most disgustingly groovy, infectious track I heard this year, absolutely bar none. I will never get enough of it, and that's Dacian by Hugo and Chase. This to the point, snappy, tech sort of number is all about the bass line that just keeps chugging and chugging away, getting right under your skin and reverberating throughout your body with no remorse. Such a thickness to this beat. Love the way it develops in such subtle but impactful ways over its course, embellishing that slightly threatening vibe more and more as it goes on, the musical definition of irresistible. Breaking into the top 10 now and kicking off this mini list, we have an artist that always comes up with at least one special song every year, and that's Boombox Cartel, and in 2018, it's Moon Love. This is another track that I pretty much fell in love with instantly, solely for its range of different moods, setting that spacey, outer-worldly scene, yet displaying his class by having it go through all of those changes. From soothing to serious and then savage in the drops, love the way Nestle's inviting vocal serenades you throughout, aware all the same that it's got its evil intentions, as the screechiness in the drops makes very clear. It brings a lot together this track, and is executed very cleanly and astutely, one of the most underrated of this year in my opinion, deserving of much more credit than it's got. At number 9 we have a track that took me a few listens to get into, but which I've ended up absolutely loving over time, and that's the title track from Barely Alive's sophomore album, Odyssey. Find me someone who is not instantly hooked by the fluorescent notes that open this track, the way they evolve in thrilling 80s synthwave fashion, over a tidy pulsating backdrop. You won't be able to. The dubstep I also find to be second to none on the Odyssey album, emphatic and full throttle, becoming more packed and filled out as it goes on, leaving no survivors in its wake as it bulldozes its way through. Do wish it was longer sometimes, but all in all a properly statement making track, and such a scintillating way to start an album, anthemic and one of my favourites of theirs 
from the last few years. At number eight, we have quite simply my number one track from my top album of this year, Temanite's Uprising, and that is the third track on the listing, A New Dawn. This for me is Temanite at the peak of his powers when it comes to bringing together grand musicality and gnarly wide-reaching dubstep, the pillars of his style and of that album generally. There is so much to enjoy about this song, the string plucked opening few seconds, the musical journey of the guitar in the intro and mid section, the drop mutations from start to finish, it just keeps giving and giving. Producers like Temanite who are making music of this sort must be cherished for taking dubstep to a whole new level entirely, both stylistically and sonically. It's through tracks like these that we realise its full potential. Following that, at number 7 we have someone who's put out or been involved in a fair few fantastic tracks this year as is the case every year, and that's Virtual Riot with Show Up featuring Virus Syndicate. Not gonna lie, I had a pretty hard time choosing between this and others like Chop Chop and Pray For Rhythm, but this one I found in the end to offer the most of any other track that he's had a part in this year. The alluring introduction, the wavy, stuttered, hard-hitting dubstep drops, the cinematic orchestral midsection, and all propped up by the wonderfully articulated, matter-of-fact vocal delivery from Virus Syndicate. It really gets taken for granted with Virtual Riot, the amount that goes into making his tracks sound the way they do, so much layering and attention to detail that cannot be ignored here, becoming a true great in the dubstep scene. At number 6 we have my yearly pick from someone who's had a tremendous breakthrough year, operating right at the forefront of the melodic dubstep movement, and that's Chime with Experience Points. It really is rare that you get a dubstep track that, whilst unerringly blinding and brutal, is still incredibly colourful, mesmeric and just plain feel good, and that's exactly what we get here. Another who had a selection of really great tracks to choose from this year, but this one takes it for its faultlessness from start to finish. There isn't one dull moment, full of surprises in its many developments. The main melody also has a very special place in my heart, establishing the story from the off and continually building in this extremely organic way. Everything you'd want from a chime track is here. Following directly on from there, we have another artist who's had quite the breakthrough year, releasing a boatload of top tracks, and that's Peekaboo, uh, my pick of the bunch from him being a rival. I think this is the style of music that the bass scene as a whole didn't know it needed, and since it's arisen in the consciousness, has taken it completely by storm, retaining the filthy design of dubstep, concentrated into these really saturated beats. Many have tried their hand at the freeform bass genre, but none have executed it quite like Peekaboo. Arrival is his most complete track for me, the most on offer in terms of changes throughout it, while supplying the same vibe and atmosphere for its entirety, the meatiest bass I've heard all year in that first drop. Telling a story as well through the vocal samples and quirky effects, the pinnacle of his production thus far, and I cannot wait to see where he takes it in 2019 and beyond. Coming in at number 4 we have someone who has been truly unleashed this year, taking his sound and dubstep generally by the horns in a revelatory last 12 months, and that space laces with Kaiju. Funnily enough, this isn't actually a predominantly dubstep track, but he finds room to incorporate it into a booming bass house number, a real flaunting of his finest skills. With switch ups in tempo, fiery vocal samples, layer upon layer of sound, and entirely different drops, it's not massively complex, but it has the desired effect in its execution. More than any other track put out by him this year, 
Kaiju is most to me what Space Lace is, is all about. Vivid, refined, industrial sounds atop seizing backdrops of different kinds, all in this kaleidoscopic setting to give it that triumphant, imposing feel. One of my all-time favourites of his. Hope he continues in this vein in the near future. At number three, we have a track that I feel a lot of people will be surprised to see in this spot, but which I haven't stopped enjoying immensely since I first heard it, and that's AT Aliens with Witch Doctor. Put simply, this is a tune that for me, in its design and structure, and what it offers sonically as a representation of the vocal trap genre, is pretty much flawless for what it is. The control and respect for space and timing here from front to back is unmatched this year. The patience and care in constructing this thing is just amazing. The kind of subtle touches that if they weren't there, you would really notice. Everything is balanced so well. Sounds used for the perfect duration and all at the right pitch. Setting this fantastic warrior-like scene in the process, fierce and striking without too much going on, effective in doing such powerful things with the little that it has. Almost like piecing together a jigsaw in its attention to detail and awareness throughout, didn't think AT Aliens could take their style to this level but they did, and expertly. Taking the number two spot, we have my favourite collab of the year, one that I must admit I didn't see coming and which surprised me with how much I enjoyed it, and that's Got Damn by Crimer and Spagheady. An outstanding coming together of styles here, both of which you can hear clearly in melding the serious, circus-like approach of Spag with the unrelenting, scratchy terror of Crimer's dubstep. In essence, one of the most wild, wacky, and crazy dubstep tunes I've heard in the last few years. So much taking your attention in different directions, the energy is off the chain. Lots to be said also for all the little flickers of brilliance here, from the cheeky, nefarious vocal samples to the breaks and the drops which are so important for creating those moments of contrast. But so much else to it beyond that, like the main melody which tells a tale in itself, the dubstep is ridiculously varied and a remarkable combination of different approaches. It's just everything you would want and more from these two. It can be difficult collaborating, but that isn't shown here at all. If anything, it sounds like they had loads of fun putting this one together. And taking that into account makes it even more impressive. A track of great quality, ideas and energy that deserves much more recognition amongst the best in dubstep this year. And at number one, my favourite dark electronic music track of 2018. It's the artist whose music has had the biggest impact on me this year, without a shadow of a doubt and that's Sudden Death with Castles. My musical life kind of changed upon hearing Mr. Danny Howland's Junkworld EP in February, having not enjoyed his previous stuff all that much, to be honest. But nothing could have prepared me for the absolute beast of a track that is Castles. No other tune released this year has given me quite this insurmountable, Thanos-like feeling. The dubstep here rackets throughout your mind whilst pummeling you in the gut, jabs of sound that leave you gasping for breath and pleading for mercy with every hit. With variety both in tempo and sound, the ferocity of it played off superbly by the Disney-inspired introduction and sprightly pinpointed builds. A song I really liked but didn't know I loved until hearing it multiple times at Lost Lands, Getting that live experience really took it to another level of appreciation for its sheer hugeness. Above all, however, I find it to be the best representation of what dubstep is at current, a meld of booming structures and guttural synths that destroys all in its path. He's put out several genre-defining tracks so far, but this is his most complete for me yet, the most intense track I heard this year, and in the best way possible. And so that is that guys for video 3 in the 2018 yearly favourite series, my top 50 singles of the year. Thank you very much and as always, 
for tuning in. Be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts on my list, but also with your favourite tracks of 2018. Which ones did I miss out in your eyes? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hitting the notification bell along the way. If you're yet to check out my other yearly favourites videos for this year so far, my favourite remixes and albums, they'll be linked somewhere next to my head here. Don't forget to like and follow Naughty Step across social media if you haven't already, all of which is linked, including a SoundCloud playlist of every track mentioned in that top 50 in the description box down below. And lastly, if it's naughty, then you know guys, so be sure as always to keep it naughty and stay safe. And I shall see all of you legends in the next one, which shall be my top 25 favourite EPs of the year, the last of the yearly favourite series for 2018. Get hyped, peace out.